wonder what kind of disease are we? It seems like humans are nothing but chaos, consuming and destroying everything. We are even attracted to destruction, violence, and carnage. People can't even drive by a car wreck without looking to see what happened, almost hoping that something crazy did happen. The media knows this, that's why all the stories are of people getting hurt or something very bad happening. But every once in a while, there are people who put themselves at risk to help complete strangers. Here are four stories of brave people I found truly inspiring. Number one. The Polish man who volunteered for Auschwitz. There's no denying life in Nazi concentration camps was truly hell. Located in southern Poland, the Auschwitz death camp was the largest of the concentration and extermination camps. We're told Pilecki volunteered to be imprisoned at Auschwitz to secretly collect intelligence and then escape. While in the concentration camp, Pilecki was responsible for informing the Allies of the atrocities of Auschwitz and organizing a resistance movement. In 1943, after three years in Auschwitz, Pilecki escaped. He took part in the Warsaw Uprising in August 1944 and served the London-based Polish government in exile, but was executed in 1948 by Stalin's police for foreign imperialism. Pilecki's exploits were suppressed by the communists for years, and it wasn't until 1989 that the world heard of this heroic man and his bravery. Number two. The three men who swam through Chernobyl's radioactive waters to stop a nuclear meltdown. In 1986, a sudden surge of power during a reactor systems test destroyed Unit 4 of Chernobyl's nuclear power plant, spewing massive amounts of deadly radioactive material into the environment. The death toll was unknown and rumored to be anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand. While many perished, three cleanup volunteers, Alexei Anenenko, Valery Bezpalov, and Boris Baronov, willingly met their fate. During the well documented in disaster, a pool of water used for emergencies in case of a break in the cooling pumps or steam pipes became flooded with a highly radioactive liquid that was in danger of blowing up. These three men suited up in scuba gear and swam into the radioactive waters of the flooded chamber, knowing full well they would die as a result. They opened up the gate valve which allowed the contaminated water to drain out. Days after reaching the surface, all three men succumbed to radiation poisoning and were buried in lead coffins. If not for the bravery of the Chernobyl Suicide Squad, a thermal explosion would have taken place resulting in unfathomable disaster. Number 3 a hero jumps in front of a train to save a stranger. At around 1 o'clock on January 2, 2007, 50-year-old construction worker Wesley Autry was waiting for a subway train with his two daughters, aged 4 and 6. All of a sudden, he noticed a man, 20-year-old Cameron Hollipater, collapse into a seizure and fell to the ground. Wesley immediately ran over to help him alongside two women with their help. Cameron could stand up again, but he couldn't fully regain his balance and was stumbling around. Still dizzy and disoriented, he fell down onto the tracks between two rails. At that moment, Wesley saw the subway train lights. The train had finally arrived and it was headed straight towards Cameron. Without hesitation, he leaped down onto the tracks and onto Cameron, covering him with his body and pushing him down onto the gap between the rails. The train couldn't stop in time and rolled over them so close some grease got on Wesley's hat. People on the platform were screaming along with Wesley's two daughters. The train finally managed to stop after five of its cars had rolled over the men. After the train stopped, there was a momentary silence interrupted only by the crying of Wesley's daughters. Wesley yelled out that both of the men were okay and told people to make sure his daughters know that their father is fine and will be back with them soon. After 20 minutes of waiting, subway workers came and helped the men back up onto the platform. Cameron was taken to the hospital. He had only suffered bumps and bruises, nothing serious. Wesley, however, didn't want any medical help. Assuring people that he was okay, he went out to see Cameron at the hospital and then headed to work as usual. Wesley was very humble about the incident and didn't want to see himself as a hero at all. Number 4 Fighting a Robber While in a Wheelchair On the evening of November 6, 2010, Larry Skopnik was shopping in the relatively empty commercial drive food stop store. A nervous looking man in a black shirt was at the counter wanting to buy cigarettes. He handed the store owner, Cindy Gruel, a $50 bill. She immediately recognized it was a fake and told him she refused to accept the money as a payment. The man denied that the bill was fake and demanded she give it back to him. But Cindy insisted on calling the police first and having them settle the conflict. This angered the man. He started swearing and arguing with Cindy. He then told her that he was going to rob the store and got behind the counter, where he proceeded to threaten Cindy with physical violence. Having seen the robber preparing to physically attack Cindy, Larry immediately reacted. He wheeled himself over to them, got behind the counter, and pulled the man away from her, wrestling him into a headlock. 
the robber pulled Larry out of his wheelchair and got onto the ground. After a few seconds of struggling, Larry managed to get on top of the criminal and then hold him down. A store employee and two other customers rushed to help him and took over. Holding down the robber while Cindy called the police, they kept him from escaping until the police arrived and arrested him. Larry is humble about what he did and didn't think it should be a big deal. He gave the credit for his deed to his parents for teaching him to always stand up to bullies. I hope you enjoyed my little video here. Please subscribe and always, you have a good one!